All right, in this video, I'm showing you how you get these 8th, 9th, or 10th gen Coffee Lake CPUs working on your Z170 or Z270 um, or even other chipset motherboards and just how you actually program the BIOS because this is the most difficult part of um, getting these CPUs to work and I've struggled a lot with um, this um, with this part of the mod overall. Um, you can get these CPUs of AliExpress. I think by now they're pretty well known, but I have had actually nothing but issues getting them to work. That is the reason why I'm doing this video, because I finally got around the issues and found the reason for why all of my boards just wouldn't work with these CPUs. Um, they work with most... Um, Skylake or KB Lake based um, platforms. The chipsets that are supported are usually listed in the AliExpress um, listing, so you can make sure that it will actually work. And also the sellers, they provide you with the BIOS if needed. I did that and I don't know why, but none of their BIOSes worked on my motherboards, none of them. And it really uh, got me thinking where the issue might come from. If it was the CPU, if they are like faulty or if the BIOS isn't correct. And yeah, I struggled a lot with this part. Obviously the appealing thing with these CPUs are the amount of cores that you're getting. You can go up to eight cores, 16 threads on a Z170 motherboard or actually even on an H110 motherboard, which is a lot and gives you great value. So it also get, provides you an upgrade path on, on um, these motherboards. And some of these CPUs are overclockable. So they are very, very appealing because you can basically get something like a 9900K somehow it isn't quite a 9900k but very very close to it working on your rather old skylake based platform so first of all you start with the bios of your motherboard and this step is a little bit dependent on your board and the model that you have i have a maximus 8 impact a very nice itx board and you can go to the manufacturing web web page of your motherboard and then you go to um, support i know that gigabyte um, web page the gigabyte web page is very similar to the asus one and also msi and asrock you will find the the bios basically you go to support and once you are at support you go to driver and tools mine is in german here then you go to bios and firmware and you select the BIOS you want to edit. I generally tend to go with the BIOS that doesn't have these, um, what are they called? These Intel has identified security issues and so on, like Spectre meltdown patches. I go with the, the version before, so I don't have these patches because I want all the performance. I don't want to have any performance lacks, yeah, or mitigations basically because of these um, fixes. Then you will also need show you. I will actually link all the tools that you that, that, that you need on on the, in the description of this video. Um, you will need um, FUDOS. With FUDOS, you also need the Rufus tool to uh, create a bootable USB drive. Then you need the coffee time 0.99 tool, your BIOS file and the UEFI tool. That's all you need to edit um, the BIOS, make it workable on a bootable USB drive to flash um, the BIOS on your motherboard. Now, most of the guides would lead you to buying um, such a programmer. I have this program, I have an asset ESETP2019 Plus, and I also have a different programmer too. Um, you can use them. My experience is a bit different, I would say, because 
very often you will run into the issue of your programmer software not supporting the BIOS chip that you actually want to edit. Um, in my experience, the ASUS BIOS chips, which you can disconnect, you don't have to solder anything, um, they work usually with the ESET P 2019 programmer, but many of the Gigabyte BIOSes, um, the chips, the actual chips, they are not supported with, with this programmer and it is a real hassle. I would recommend you using um, FUDOS because it works on all American Megatrend BIOSes and these are on ASUS, ASRock and Gigabyte motherboards. I'm not sure about MSI. I, I'm really not sure about that. So maybe MSI motherboards don't use um, American Megatrends and FUDOS wouldn't work on them. So you, will, so you would actually need this programmer in this case. So make sure Actually, just go with an ASUS Gigabyte or ASRock motherboard. It's the easiest because just go with one that has American Megatrends BIOSes because then you don't have to desolder a BIOS chip on your motherboard, which you will need a, another tool again, like a, a soldering station with a heat gun and a flux to desolder the chip and solder it back on and, you know, if you are handy and if you're skilled and if you already have all the tools, why not? But if you would have to buy all these things just to modify one BIOS, I would reconsider my options if I were in your case. All right. So now that you have um, downloaded all the files and ready in one folder, you um, open up the coffee time tool. This here. I run it as an administrator. I don't think you actually have to do this. And then you browse for the BIOS you want to edit. So mine is here in the same folder, subfolder basically, and you open it up and then you continue. Wanna make sure it actually records. Yep, and here's the recording, all right. So now it loads all the data of your um, BIOS file. And this tool is actually very nice. It allows you to uh, modify the BIOS very easily and it is mostly automated. So you don't have to be an expert in what you're doing. Just do the same that I do, basically. <laughs> it's the easiest. Now, first of all, the management engine, you go here and you press this dot 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 um, thing and you replace the management engine with the most recent one now i've seen guides where they say you should not use a management engine that has 11.8 you should use an older one and in my experience it never <laughs> worked with the older one so i'm not gonna go with the older one i'm just gonna go with the newest one and i click on replace now it will update the Intel management engine of the BIOS file, basically. So next step is very, very important because that was the reason for all my struggles. All the BIOSes I got from the supplier had this thing enabled. And that was the reason why it didn't work, actually. That's the, the main reason you need to disable it. All right. Now that you disable it, you just patch all these things. The PCI Express, so your motherboard actually works with PCI, so that the slot actually works with this CP CPU. Then you go and apply the SQ hack. The sync cores, because your um, CPU probably uses more than four cores and they wouldn't work on this platform because it is only um, designed for four cores and eight threads max, then A plus CPUs, if you were to use one of these ACPI tables, yes. Um, then, takes a bit of time, I'll wait for it. Then you go to VBIOS plus GOP, and here we also need to replace the VBIOS option to the newest one which already is here that's nice still clicking replace now maybe some windows will open up 
Yep. As I said, it's a very automated process and that's very nice. So you don't have to be an expert in what you're doing. Still going. Yep. Now it's processing. All right, done. This one is needed in case you are trying to use the um, integrated GPU of your um, of your CPU. It wouldn't work if you w didn't update this part of the BIOS. Then 16 thread support, yes, because you may use an A-core 16 thread CPU. Then this one, the PCIe 1440, this one is needed for these laptop CPUs because this, this means basically a FPGA 1440, which our um, CPU is. It's a laptop based CPU, FD locks. We unlock this one and now the microcodes. This one is important because these microcodes um, are needed to support the CPU on your motherboard. And you need to apply the proper microcodes to your board. Now you may ask yourself, how do I know which microcode is needed for my CPU? This is the part where I show you on the listing of of this specific um, CPU, that's actually not the one that I'm using, but it doesn't matter, um, it fulfills the need for, for this video. Now, in EXT family, so the CPU C screenshot, you can see it is a 9EP0, right? Um, am I actually right? It is, uh, where is it? Oh no, I'm wrong. Family. This one is the important one. Specification. Family. 6. Model E. Stepping C. So 6. Mm, 6 E C. Which is this one. That's the microcode you will need to support the CPU on your motherboard. Now most BIOSes that are 16 gigabyte, 16, 16, 16 megabytes, um, support, uh, ha they have enough space to support basically all these microcodes. So you click, you could click on all of them and they will work. So I'm going to go with all of them. So all of these um, CPUs will work. And then I'm also going to apply these. Yep. And all these. Okay. And I'm going to replace the existing microcodes with the ones here. So as you can see, now we have way more microcodes that are supported on, on this uh, motherboard. All right, that's page one. Then we go to extra. My motherboard cannot support 128 gigabytes because it only has two slots, but maybe you have a four slot motherboard and you could use like uh, 32 gigabyte modules, which is very, very dense uh, and usually you would not do it. But if you are already on it, you can also unlock this um, feature. So you have a, yeah, you could basically upgrade your board to 128 gigabytes of memory. Then we go to SPD write protection. Uh, let's go to enable and this one for hex and tech CPU count, which is to enable everything, doesn't matter. Now, one thing that I also do is um, if you were to boot up your, your motherboard the first time, it would read the SPD information of your memory. And sometimes they are 2400 megahertz. And some of these laptop CPUs have issues with um, high clocked DDR4 memory. So if you want it to work for sure, you can um, you can modify the BIOS to the point where it would always boot at 2133 megahertz. So you can press this circle here and now it changed this over and that's it. That's basically all we need to do to our BIOS and it is ready to go. So we save the image and I'm gonna call it BIOS. That's it. That has a good reason why I'm doing that. All right. Now, the next step 
you will need this UEFI tool. This one I'm going to use to rename the BIOS from .bin to .rom because it has to be a .rom to work with FUDOS. So I will go to file, open the image file, go to BIOS.bin, open it up, make a right click on this field here, extract as is. I'm going to call it BIOS.rom. That's it. That's all we need to do and we're ready to go. Then you will need your flash drive. It can be a very small one, it doesn't have to be a big um, drive. I'm just using a spare one. Um, yeah, doesn't matter what kind of drive you're using. Then you go to the FUDOS folder. You open up Rufus, run as administrator. Then that's it. Oh, it is a large, it has to be FAT32, just so you know. Um, this one doesn't matter. We can also name it FUDOS if you want to. It has to be um, bootable. And make sure you, you um, use FreeDOS so it can actually boot. And that's it. I'm gonna format this drive. This is kind of a um, mini version of DOS on your on your flash drive. So y when you plug it into your um, motherboard and you boot off of it, it acts like a mini operating system, kind of. All right, that's done. Now we will open up the flash drive, which is named FUDOS. And we put these two files into our flash drive. This is the BIOS programming file and this file will, will search for, for your BIOS file named BIOS.ROM. It has to be named BIOS.ROM or it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't um, read uh, or delete the existing BIOS of your board. Now at this point you would have to go to your computer that you want to want to flash this this BIOS on. You um, put the the flash drive in the back of your motherboard, and when you boot the system up, you you would have to press the the F key that will lead you to the um, boot option. Uh, on ASUS it is F8, on Gigabyte it is F12, and I think on A ASRock it is F11. And there you can choose the flash drive as the first boot option. When you boot off of this uh, flash drive, you can you, you will be asked what kind of keyboard you want to use. Mine is like option, I think is Swiss German and then English, doesn't matter. You just choose the one you want. You press enter and then the whole process is automated. It will first verify that your BIOS on these on this drive is actually compatible with the motherboard then it will erase all the files of your motherboard then it will flash all the files of this um, drive to the motherboard's BIOS and then it will again verify that all the blocks of your um, BIOS chip on the motherboard are programmed correctly and once that's done you are basically ready to install your um, laptop CPU and it should work. I hope it does. Let me know in the comments down below and I hope it, this video was um, helpful for you and your experience with these CPUs. I will see you soon. Bye.